Hello students and welcome to this explanation on supply and demand linear equations. So I would like to start this video by explaining that I will be recording the first three questions of the set of random examples and call it video part one. And then there will be a video part two, which will feature question four, five and six. I have uploaded these random set of questions to the blackboard already. Furthermore, I will be writing the answer by hand uh, for the purpose of explaining the mathematics. The reason for that is I find that students find it easier to understand the math when I write it. However, I will also be making available a memo that is typed. So if you don't appreciate my handwriting, you can also look at the typed memo. Right, so I want us to read together. Question number one, and in 1.1 it says, suppose consumers will demand 120 units of a product when the price is 40 rand per unit and 180 units when the price is 25 rand per unit. In 1.1.1 it asks us to determine the demand equation by assuming that it is linear and that Q should be the number of units while P is the price. Then in 1.1.2 it asks us to determine the price when 80 units are demanded. Alright, so let's just first consider that first scenario within question 1. So in 1.1.1, it requires of us, it requires of us to go and estimate a equation. So when we estimate equations, there is two steps. So the first step is that we have to go and calculate our, uh, what we call M, which is our slope. And for this purpose, there's a formula, but first we need to go and figure out what is then the Q1 with its corresponding P1, what will be the Q2 with its corresponding P2, and then only we can uh, cross over to use our slope equation. So if I look at Q1, the first quantity given in that example was 120 units and its corresponding price was 40 rand. The second uh, set of uh, information given there was the second quantity and that was 180 units and P2, the corresponding price, was 25 rand. So once we have this information, we can now go and apply our slope equation. So for the slope, we're going to say that M is P2 minus P1 over Q2 minus Q1. That is our formula. And now we need to go and replace this information. So for P2, it was 25, P1 was 40, and for Q2, it was 180 minus 120 for the Q1. Right, so if I fill out that information, I get minus 15 over 60, and that gives us one, minus 1 over Four. So this should be correct. How do I know that the slope is correct? Because the answer that I got to is negative, right? If we have a demand slope, please remember that if you look at it on a graph, uh, let's say this is your x uh, uh, axis and your y axis, if we talk about demand, it looks like this. And because the slope moves downward, the slope answer for demand will always be negative. So we got to negative 1 over 4. So if you get to a positive answer when the question asks for a demand function, you need to know that you've made a mistake. The demand function slope must always be negative. 
Right, so there we've now solved our M or our slope. Then we can move on to the second step. And the second step is to go and determine uh, the equation. So for the equation, there is a formula. And for the formula, we say, all right, the demand's price equals MQ minus the um, M times Q1 plus P1. That is the formula when we determine our equation. So here we're going to then fill in the necessary information. So we're going to say the, the price of the demand is MQ. So it was minus 1 over 4Q minus M was minus 1 over 4. Then our first quantity, what was quantity Q1? Quantity Q1 was 120 and P1 was 40. So we're going to replace that by then saying it's 120 plus 40. Right. Moving along, we now need to solve this equation. And thus, it's going to be minus 1 over 4Q minus. Then minus a quarter times 120. If I type that into my calculator, I get minus 30. Still in a bracket, plus 40. So now it's important to remember that we have to mind the sign. Because we mind the sign because a minus and a minus in mathematics gives us a positive effect. So that means that the demand's price will be minus 1 over 4Q. A minus and a minus is a positive, plus 30 plus the 40 of P1. Then our final answer will be the demand's price equals 1 over 4Q plus 70. And there we have solved 1.1.1. We also have 1.1.2. Uh, And 1.1.2 tells us what if Q is equal to 80 units? What will the price be if 80 units are demanded? So because we've just solved this demand price equation, we can use our equation in 1.1.1 to go and fill out the information into that equation to get to an answer. So what we will do here is to say, all right, well, the price the, in terms of the demand's price is going to be 1 over 4 times the 80 units plus 70. So minus a quarter of 80 is minus 20. So that means that the demand in terms of price is going to be equal to minus 20 plus 70. So that means the price is going to be equal to 50 rand. And there we have solved both required part 1.1.1 and 1.1.2. So as you can see, if you adhere to the two steps, first getting to the slope and then applying the equation formula, it's really easy to do. Right, let's look at 1.2. In one point, question 1, 1 1.2, it says the demand function for a product is given by the price of the demand is 22 minus 0,8Q. And the supply function, if for the supply function, P equals 6 plus 1, 2Q. Then they ask us in 1.2.1 to determine the market equilibrium. So what does the market equilibrium mean? It means where the supply and demand is equal to one another. So we'll have to set the two equations equal to get to the market equilibrium. And then in 1.2.2, 1.2.2, uh, we are asked to 
calculate or recalculate the market equilibrium if a tax of two rand is imposed. Right, so let's see. For, I'm just going to scroll down. Right, so the, we are on 1.2.1. We need to find the market equilibrium, so we're going to set the functions, the linear functions equal. So it's 22 minus 0,8q should be equal to 6 plus 1,2q. Now we need to move all the mathematical elements that are the same to the same side of the equation. So for the items that do not have a Q, a quantity, we're going to say it's 22. The 6 will come over the rainbow, as teachers sometimes say, minus 6 then because it was a positive 6 and the sign will change. Then on the right hand side, we already have a 1,2Q there. And then if the 1, uh, 0,8q comes over the rainbow, it's going to be positive. If we solve that, it gives us 2q on this side, and 22 uh, minus 6 should add up to 16. Right, then we have to solve our q, which means we need to divide by 2 on both sides. And that leaves us then with a Q. And if we take 16 divided by 2, the answer is 8. So for the equilibrium quantity, we need to sell 8 units to have market equilibrium. However, we've not solved the entire market equilibrium because we also need a market price. So market equilibrium has two functions. We need a Q and we need a P. So how do we get the P? We always take the answer of the market equilibrium units and we go and replace it into the supply function. So let's see. What was the supply again? Supply was, the price of the supply was 6 plus 1,2q. So I'm going to replace this one then and say the price is 6 plus 1,2 times 8. And then 1.2 times 8. Oh, come on. Is 9,6. So our answer there is 6 plus 9.6. And the answer there is then 15 rand 60 cents for the price. All right, so that's our market equilibrium. So we've solved both the price and we've also solved the Q, the units. Market equilibrium, we always need to have two answers, the quantity as well as the price. Right, moving along then, uh, we need to go and figure out how to now treat the situation where they impose tax. Right, so if we have tax, and in number 1.2.2, they tell us that there is a tax and the tax is equal to 2 rand. So the first thing that we need to know is uh, how do I treat this tax? And there's two things you have to remember. When you have tax, you need to know that it will affect the supply function because for the supply, the 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 basically the supplier or the business owner will pay the tax to SARS, so they have to collect it and pay it, so it will affect their supply function. Right, so that's the first thing we need to do. It affects supply. Then, how does it affect supply? Well, it affects supply, uh, it affects the price, the P. So, why does it affect the price? Because basically, um, 
you will have less of the price left when tax is imposed as a, a supplier. So suppose that you can sell your uh, textbook and make 10 rand profit and now a 2 rand tax is imposed now, the, the, it is only, you will only basically be left with 8 rand. So um, the, the, the price that remains for the supplier to profit off of will be smaller. Right, so let's look at the information then. We are still busy then with the supply. And we're going to say then that just to keep track of everything, I'm going to say the supplies price equals um, the six plus one comma two Q. So the tax needs to be deducted from the price. So we're going to say, so from the price, it's minus two rand should be six plus one comma two Q. Then therefore the price the the new supply price should be six. This two will go over the rainbow plus two plus one comma two Q. Of course, we're going to put everything together. That is now the same. So it gives us eight plus one comma two Q. Right. So this is our new supply. So I'm just going to call it new supply price but we've not answered the question because they ask us if the tax is imposed what will the market equilibrium be so this means that we need to take our new um, price for supply and set it equal to the demand to get a new market equilibrium so now we're going to say well we just had calculated a new supply which is 8 plus 1 comma 2 Q and we're going to set it equal to the original demand in 22 comma 0 uh, minus 0 comma 8 Q and the demand did not change because the tax does not affect the demand function right everything to the same side so 1 comma 2 Q I'm going to have this side minus 0 comma 8 I'm going to move over the rainbow then i'm left on the right hand side with 22 the 8 will come this side so it's minus 8 because it was it used to be positive right then we are left again with 2q if we add up 22 plus 8 that gives us 30 so q will then be if we divide by the 2 on both sides q will be equal to 15. for market equilibrium we have two things that we have to solve. We have to solve the quantity and we also have to solve the price. So at this point, we've only solved the quantity. What do we do in order to solve then the price? Well, we go to our supply function in this instance and we used our new supply here. So we need to remember that and put it into the supply function. So the new supply function was 8 plus 1 comma 2q. We've just calculated that q is 15. So that is 8 plus 1.2 times 15. And that is going to give us how much? 1.2 times 15, that gives us 18. If we add 8 to the 18, we get to a total of 26 Rand. So the market equilibrium quantity is 15. The market equilibrium price is 26 Rand when we impose a tax of 2 Rand. So let's review what we've done. In 1.2.2, they tell us that there's a tax of 2 rand. So we go and adjust our supply function. How do we adjust the supply function? We minus the tax from the price. Right, so then we got to a new supply function. The new supply function was used to calculate market equilibrium. 
what is market equilibrium? Market equilibrium means that the demand and the supply are equal to each other. Then we solved the quantity. We got to the quantity was 15 and we replaced the quantity into our new supply function. And it told us that the market equilibrium price was 26 rand. All right, great. So that was our first question, question number one. I want us to move on to question number two then, if we can read together. Question number two says, the demand function for a product is the price of the demand is 1,200 minus 3Q where P is the price, Q is the quantity that's demanded. The supply function is the price of the supply is 1,000 plus 2Q. And then again, they ask you, uh, determine the equilibrium quantity and determine the equilibrium price. So in the second question, they were quite nice. I can just tell you what is the market equilibrium, and then you need to know that you have to calculate the both of them. In the second question, they were being kind, and they adjusted it to a, a 2.1 and 2.2, so it was easier to answer. But let's consider how we're going to approach then question two. Going back to the memo, I'm just going to select a new sheet. And we are on 2.1 where we have to calculate the equilibrium quantity. So for the equilibrium quantity, what do you have to do? Well, we have to set the two equal to each other. So we're going to take the 1,200 minus 3Q, and we're going to set it equal to the supply, which was 1,000 plus 2Q. Again, everything needs to go to the to a side of the equation. So I'm going to have the 1,200 here. And I'm going to bring over the minus 1,000 over the rainbow. Then that equals 2Q, and we're going to add 3Q to it because it needs to come to the other side. It used to be negative. So this will give us 200, and that is equal to 5Q, and then we have to solve the Q by dividing by 5 on both sides. If I do that calculation, the Q is equal to 40. So the equilibrium for quantity is 40 units. Now we still have to answer 2.2, which asks us for the price, the market equilibrium price. So what do we do to get to the market equilibrium price? Well, we take our supply function and then the price of the supply was 1,000, uh, no, I beg your pardon, it was just 1,000 plus 2Q, and then we have to go and replace the Q that we've calculated as the quantity. So the supply price is 1,000 plus 2 times 40, and that is then 1,000 plus 80. And the final answer for the price is then a thousand and eighty rand and there we have solved both our market equilibrium quantity and also our market equilibrium price all right great moving on to uh, the third question the third question is a little bit interesting because now they've swapped it around, the Q and the P. They're just trying to scare you uh, with the whole math situation. It really isn't supposed to scare you, so let's go through it. For question three, they say the demand function is the quantity of the demand equals 900 plus three times the price. 
where P is the price, Q is the quantity, the supply function uh, equals the Q of the supply is 1000 minus 2 times the price. Then they ask you the equilibrium price first and the equilibrium quantity secondly. So now we're going, to we're going to solve the price first because the price is the P is contained within the equation, but we're going to follow the exact same rationale, right? We're going to say market equilibrium means that these two equations need to be set equal to each other. Right, so for question three, again, I'm just moving to a new... to a new spreadsheet. Right, 3.1, let's explore. With 3.1, we're going to say, well, the supply must be equal to the demand. So we're going to take the 900 plus 3P, we're going to set that equal to the 1,000 plus, uh, minus, I beg your pardon, it's a minus. Uh, 1,000 minus 2P. Trying to read off of this paper that I have in front of me. Right, so let's just double check. So it was 900 plus 3P for the demand, for the demand function. And then it was 1,000 minus 2P for the supply function. We're going to get everything to the same side. So I'm going to have the 3p here and I'm going to bring the 2 over the rainbow. It was a minus so it's going to become positive so it's 2p and then I'm going to move because there's already a thousand on the right hand side. I'm going to move the 900 this side and it's going to become minus 900. That gives us a 100 that is equal to 5p so therefore p should be equal to 20. so p should be equal to 20 rand that is our equilibrium price right now we have to go back and replace our answer to get to the equilibrium quantity in 3.2 Right, so for 3.2, what was the supply again? The price of the supply or the quantity of the supply was 1,000 minus 2P. So for the quantity, it's going to be 1,000 minus 2 times 20 because we're replacing the 20. And therefore... The Q equals 1,000 minus 2 times 20 is minus 40. And therefore, Q will be equal to 960 units. So for market equilibrium, we have to then sell 960 units. And we have to sell them at a price of 20 rand. So that was quite interesting having turned around the P and the Q. Uh, they're just playing around with the sides on which the P's and the Q's are at. Right, so I'm going to stop the part one of the video here. For part two, we will be covering question four and five and six. I will then see you in the second part to this explanation.